<laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den. With me, your host, Jordan, your Master of Lore and Storyteller Extraordinaire. We are continuing on with our Player's Guide series and Today I wanted to try just a couple of different things. One, I wanted to make the uh, make these videos just a little bit shorter here to make them just a bit more bite-sized and digestible and uh, not throw quite as much at everybody all at once. And uh, another thing that will be coming out when the later parts of this series, when I start uploading the uh, actual character build ideas for the various character classes, I'm going to be using some different slides and the like. Something that uh, negates me having to use sheets of paper, holding my camera, hoping I keep it steady so that's not constantly going in and out of focus. Just something that's a little bit more trim and professional looking. But now, with that out of the way, what class are we covering today? Well, given that I started on the martial arts campaigns, I thought it might be appropriate to cover the monk character class. And these are not the Benedictine monks that you would have found in in Western Europe during the Middle Ages. Now these are your Shaolin Gong Fu monks. These are your martial arts experts, your martial adepts, these ferocious warriors that are skilled with uh, using their bodies as living weapons to crack, kill, pull apart, and just utterly decimate their foes. Well, how far they go just depends on the style that they practice, but whichever aesthetic you decide to use to describe how your monk fights, what the core mechanics of the class still essentially remain the same but the monk has kind of occupied a weird place in dungeons and dragons history and has continued on through with pathfinder um the monk has well first off it's clashed a bit because traditionally dungeons and dragons has had more of a had a, a setting and aesthetic feel of western europe of fantasy imagined or reimagined Western Europe-ish sort of uh, stylings with knights, full plate armor and the like, uh, those distinctive styles with the long swords or the great big two-handed swords and the like, but um, the monk has just always kind of clashed a bit, and not only that, but the monk has a couple of problems running with it just because, well, it gets down to one core issue here that I wanted to discuss today and propose a solution to. That'll be explored more in the optimized build guide for the monk later. And one thing that I should absolutely preface this with is I tried to come up with my own build to be more effective than uh, a particular build that I'd found on the internet some time ago. Uh, the build is by a, f a figure that goes by the name Triant Monk. Uh, full credit absolutely goes to Treant Monk for the build guide that they put together, and I will be linking that in the description below, so that way you can go and reference it yourself. Uh, but I'm hoping that by making these videos, I can provide a bit more of a breakdown, a blow-by-blow -blow, um, sort of thing, and it maybe do a little bit more to explain why it's effective. Um, the Treant Monk's guides certainly are excellent they are great i wholeheartedly rec recommend that you go and check those out as well but i wanted to present it here because well i just feel like it's information that should continue to be shared and uh, kept uh, kept alive and actively in use now what's the core issue facing monks uh, for you new players it may not be so obvious right away but for veteran players Monks are absolutely a class that is mad, multiple ability dependent. Most classes will rely on one or two ability scores, maybe three. Like, take the fighter build that we looked at before. Um, fighters can are typically going to be expected to be making use of strength and constitution, or dexterity and constitution, with maybe a little bit of strength thrown in there, depending on the exact build that you have in mind. But... You know, that's going to be about the gist of it. Overall, there may be some exceptions depending on what exactly you have in mind, what you're going for as far as your character and the, uh, um, and the story that you have set out for them. Story absolutely makes a lot of room and exceptions for many things. But looking at things just from a straight mechanical perspective, most classes will make use of one or two ability scores, maybe three if they're pushing it. But in the monk's case, they go a little bit further than that. As, well, 
with the particular class features available to the monk, most of them, in order to be able to use them, you can't be wearing armor. So dexterity becomes very important. The higher your dexterity, the harder your character is to hit. Now, because you're focusing on dexterity uh, in to pr improve your armor, and you can't wear armor or use shields, really, uh, you're looking at a lower armor class starting out. But the monks do get an added boon. Uh, not only is dexterity focusing on dexterity, uh, meaning you're pumping up a very much a prime stat that affects your initiative, armor class, several skills, some of those which that the monk does have as class skills that you can train up and max out, but you're also affecting your reflex saves and your ranged attacks as well. So that's not too terrible a thing. Uh, the other added benefit though that goes towards helping your armor class is if you're wearing no armor, you also get to count in your character's wisdom score as part of your armor, which well, the wisdom ability modifier rather than the score, that is. So that does help negate things a little bit, but that's two stats we're depending on now. And not only that, but the monk is a martial artist. They are a damage dealer. So, well, now on top of dexterity and wisdom, we're also depending on strength because while you can take weapon finesse and use your dexterity for uh, making it so your monk can hit with that agile fluid maneuvering they're still going to be depending on the raw physical power of their muscles to deal damage so you'll need that strength score in there in order to make that damage dealing ability more effective but now there's another thing we got to think about so they're a damage dealer they're going to be engaging in melee most of the time because if you take a look at the monk's uh, list of weapon proficiencies they're limited limited to anything that could be described as a monk weapon Though with some flexibility from your DM or storyteller, you can easily swap things out depending on the martial arts style you have in mind. That's that's flexibility right there, but keeping on track. So you're dealing with monk weapons, so you're going to be in close. You don't have a lot in the way of ranged weapons when it comes to playing a monk. So you're going to be in close in melee dealing damage. That means you're also going to be depending on your constitution score to boost your health. And because you're not able to wear armor and you're depending on two separate ability scores to boost your armor class and make you harder to hit and you need to hit hard and you need to be able to take a hit in case somebody gets past that lower armor class score, you're depending on five out of six ability scores in order for this character to perform with some amount of effectiveness. Really, the only stat you're not going to be making a great deal of use out of is going to be your Charisma score. And that's why the class is mad, multiple ability dependent, because it absolutely has different features and components of the class that rely on these multiple ability scores. So, the, I guess the question then becomes, what do you choose to focus on? What should you build in order to be an effective character? Well, there's one thing that sticks out in my mind, and certainly it stuck out in Treant Monk's mind. This was a point that we ended up agreeing on, um, actually for quite a lot, but uh, for quite a lot independent of one another, I should say, to start. Although his build certainly ended up being much more effective than many of the Monk characters I'd played before. But what we should be focusing on is the ability to deal damage. That should be the number one. Everything else is secondary, uh, tertiary concerns. It's number one is dealing damage. So we want to focus on our character's strength score. And the reason for that is, well, since we're in melee, and melee works off of strength, we're going to be increasing our ability to hit as well as deal damage. And since monks don't have the greatest attack bonus progression, they don't have the worst one like wizards do, but they don't have a great one either. So strength is going to be incredibly helpful. On top of this, one of the key iconic features of the monk character class is their Flurry of Blows ability, which starting at level one will let them make two attacks. It's at a slight penalty, but if we say pump up our character strength score to an 18 to where we got a solid plus four bonus that affects our damage and our ability to hit we're attacking twice at first level with a plus three modifier not 
too shabby to start with. It's not the greatest, but unlike all the other character classes, unless you're dealing with a fighter that has the cleave feet right out the gate, you are going to be able to make two attacks each and every round. And another part of the monk character class is if they are unarmed, attacking barehanded, using elbows, knee strikes, oh, headbutting, what have you, they get to deal 1d6 points of damage, same amount of damage as a club or a short sword. Unlike most of the other character classes, which are going to be dealing a d4 or 1d2 or, uh, 1 points of damage. So the character is going to be able to put out a decent amount of damage, making two attacks per round. So by focusing on strength, we start to make the character much more effective and begin overcoming some of these limitations that end up well not limitations the confusion that ends up coming in with what players feel like they should focus on when it comes to their characters uh, characters ability scores certainly you don't want terrible stats in the well in your other stats uh, the next most important stat I would say it comes down to kind of a tie between constitution and wisdom for me certainly uh, dexterity can easily edge out uh, constitution possibly it just depends on what you feel like is more important but for the purposes of this build the next thing that we want pumped up a bit is wisdom because monks have what's called the key pool or chi pool i've never been clear on exactly how to pronounce it i'm assuming it's chi even though it's spelled k-i or q-i depending on what books you're looking at um but the uh, the chi pool allows your character to do uh, some very interesting things one is they can uh is they can uh the abilities that you get from using this are very varying in their effectiveness but number one is if you spend one of these chi pool points which is equal to half your character level plus your wisdom modifier you can mute spend one of these points and make an extra attack so you're getting to make three potentially three attacks in a round, increasing your damage output, which is exactly what we want to focus on. So wisdom gets to be very important. It also ties into a number of other abilities, which we'll get to later on in the build. Next, what we want to focus on, like I said, is either our dexterity or constitution score. There's certainly benefits to avoiding being hit, but you need to be able to take a hit as well. So it just comes down to a matter of debate and personal preference at that point and like I said before the only true dump stat is charisma that's the only one you really don't need to focus on or think about but again coming back down to all of these abilities all of these ability scores are incredibly important and I hope this uh, makes clear to you why monks kind of just have had such an odd place and well, if you go online to many different forums where you look up uh, how the different character classes rank, the people will stack in tiers. Monks consistently rank in tier 5 or tier 6, the absolute bottom rungs. To a certain extent, a lot of this boils down to opinion, and really, given the amount of confusion that comes in with making monk characters just because they are so multiple ability dependent, it's easily understandable why they're listed down at the bottom but for that said monks do get a lot of other interesting abilities for example as long as they have one point of chi still remaining in the chi pool their weapon or their hands their bare hands over time as they level up will count as magic weapons lawfully aligned and eventually adamantine meaning that uh, if they count as having been made from adamantium even though you know they're flesh and bone but since they count as adamantium they overcome all sorts of damage reduction and can actually damage adamantium made constructs like armor weapons uh adamantium golems and the like all sorts of neat and interesting things there not only that but as they level up they get bonuses to their armor class not huge but every little bit helps and that 1d6 points of damage that they get to do with their barehanded attacks that also increases as they level up every four levels. They go from 1d6 to 1d8. From 1d8, 1d10, 
to 2d6 to 2d8 and it just builds and builds so the really the focus overall at least in my mind and of course it's confirmed and absolutely put together beautifully by treant monk is that you want to focus on dealing damage and that means focusing on strength but that's just the start for now pointing out some of the flaws of the monk we'll get more into their strengths later as we actually start to put together the uh, optimized monk build guide for now i'm leaving you here with this slightly shorter video i hope it has been much more digestible and bite-sized for you folks out there in particular for you new players for veteran players i'm probably not covering anything especially new but on the off chance that i am i hope that this has given you something to think about and consider the next time you're thinking about maybe playing as a monk depending on whatever setting you're in certainly for a martial arts themed campaign it absolutely makes sense to play a monk character and i hope that this build guide will help you out down the line with that said i've been your host jordan your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire and if you've been enjoying today's video, go ahead and go down there and click on like. And if you've been enjoying the content here so far, you know, let me know. Throw it down there in the comments below. Or even if you haven't, just let me know. Give me feedback. It's the best way that I'm going to be able to improve. And the changes that I'm making here so far are based on feedback that I've gotten from viewers. Although, albeit it's been sent to me over various private messages. But through this feedback i will be able to improve this channel and also if you do subscribe and which i absolutely hope you do click the bell icon that way you get notified the next time i upload content here oh at least that's the hope i'm not always sure that the clicking the bell icon helps what with youtube and their various algorithms and randomly unsubscribing people but with that said once again i've been your host and thank you all for your time you guys have yourselves a good night